Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today, we're going to do a short little segment on materials and structural trades, uh, a topic I've presented before, uh, but I wanted to hit it again because I want to make sure people notice this and go watch the video on how this tubing is made and what it might be able to do for you and your project. Um, as a part of this project, I was trying to figure out how to make um, composite tubing uh, lighter for a given stiffness, uh, and especially torque tubes. Uh, I was going to put torque tubes in the wing for controls, but I'm not going to do that now. But I did a bunch of work in the process uh, to try to figure this out. And uh, this is a piece of a braided uh, tubular carbon fiber uh, that was molded on an aluminum tube. And uh, I'll provide a link here. You can go see those processes. And uh, after it was cured and pulled off the tubing, and it's only one layer thick, I poured in uh, the urethane that you mix in two parts, and it foams up, and it fills it up. I thought, wow, that makes a pretty nice, stiff, good compressive strength piece of tubing, and it's only one layer of carbon fiber. And the foam that went in here really didn't add that much weight. This is, this is extremely light. It's like lifting up. It's less than balsa wood uh, on its density, so that's pretty cool. Um, and but what I discovered in the process is when it foams up inside, there's some weird dynamic thing that occurs with the foaming, and you get a layer uh, that's the appropriate density and well bonded to the outside, and then you get a core on this thing that's the right density, and in between <laughs> you get like this ring of bubbles all the way around. I, I don't understand how they form or how that actually occurs, and it's down here too. So you like get the slug down the middle of foam that's good, and a, and a ring around the outside that's good, and a weak area in between. And when you go put torque on this, boys, it fail fast. Uh, it just fails right along that line where all of those bubbles form. So uh, interesting idea, but didn't work out so good. Maybe somebody could get that to work uh, so that you have even density all the way across, and then it might be a, a good uh, solution. What I came up with instead is uh, I, I've taken the sandwich panel methodology for making D2s and reduced it down to a really small diameter, a uh, really small size like the size of one inch tubing. Uh, and there's a video that I did quite a ways back, more than a year ago now, on how to make this tubing. And what this is, is it's got one layer of fiberglass on the inside, in this case it has to be three ounce, and one layer of 5.6 ounce carbon fiber on the outside, and in between is a 16th inch thick layer of Airx foam. And there's some tricks to making this tubing that's covered in that video. Uh, but what you have is a sandwich panel piece of tubing and let me tell you, it's one layer and one layer, and you cannot squish this stuff with your hand. It is massively stiff in compressive strength. Now, if you just took a layer of carbon fiber and a layer of fiberglass, and that was your whole tubing, you would not get this result. You could, you could just crush it right in your hand. And bending stiffness, just like you made this out of four or five layers of cloth. Now, I found the trade-off point is about three layers of cloth. Uh, if you were going to make a tube and you only need three layers of carbon fiber, well, it's about a break even on weight with this. But if you have a tube uh, that, say you got hang glider leading edges or something like that, and you need a tube that's got five, six, seven layers of carbon fiber, well, this is going to beat it on strength to weight ratio by a mile. Um, and there's no reason why you can't put two layers on the inside and two layers on the outside or two on the inside, one on the outside, or vice versa, or put carbon fiber on the inside instead of uh, uh, fiberglass, or maybe you want to use some texturing material on this. The composites can be anything that you want. Uh, the trick is how you lay it up. And this stuff is so strong. I, I have not tested it to get actual numbers on its strength. I don't have a lot of capability in that area. And, didn't want to spend the thousands of dollars to send it out and have it tested. Um, so I did some uh, little torque tests with it. I'll link you to that video too. You can go look at them. Um, this stuff, I was able to put a torque wrench on it and, and just torque it apart. Um, this stuff, no. Uh, really, really strong. In fact, here's a fitting I was looking at at the time, a drive fitting for part of the control system. And... It, this fitting is uh, bolted onto a wood block inside here, and that wood block is just simply uh, epoxied inside the tube, roughed up the inside of the tube, epoxied it in. Had this mounted in my jig, and I had another one of these. I had a big honking torque wrench on it out here. Pulling, 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 pulling. I torqued the bolt off. <laughs> the steel bolt 
torqued off before the tubing failed. This feather light stuff turned out to be stronger in torsion than the steel bolt. Pretty impressive. Not A in hardware, but still pretty darn strong bolt. So this stuff is really stiff and strong in torsion. I find if I wasn't building another glider, I'd go make a bunch of this tubing and and get a flex wing, pull all the aluminum tubing off the flex wing, and substitute this kind of stuff for it. You might be able to get your flex wing weight from 85 pounds down to maybe 40 or 35 pounds. Uh, you could save that kind of weight with this stuff. And the reason I'm promoting this is I hope more people try this out. I know some folks in the rocketry area, the high-powered rocketry, ha have tried this out for their body tubes. I, I don't know what the results are. Um, I think I saw one comment somewhere. Somebody tried to make this stuff and actually couldn't get the process to work out for them. And, and that's just a matter of practice. Uh, keep trying to get it to work. Uh, but if I used a piece of this on the pilot's cage, uh, and I put it in a non-critical area. It's the brace piece that goes behind me. And I'm just going to see how it holds up in terms of durability. I know it's plenty strong. Uh, so I would encourage you to go watch the video on how this stuff is made. And if you've got any kind of project at all where you need tubing, try this out. You're going to make yourself some tubing that has astronomical strength to weight ratio. And if you do have to put a fitting in, a bolt through here, well, you would drill this out and uh, drop in uh, some carbon fiber tubing. Uh, you can get small diameter carbon fiber tubing that has an inside diameter that matches standard bolts. And you'd put that in here and then just put some potting on the inside here, mix up some uh, epoxy with cotton flocks and, and put it in here. And that's what I'm doing on my pilot's cage. And that will give you all of the compressive strength that you need this way. And it will give you the tear out strength that you need because the extra radius and then the fillet of glue that you put on the inside gives you the tear out strength that you need. So it is possible to put bolts through this too. It's just you have to put in a little bushing uh, and then epoxy it in and prop properly to carry the loads. But cool stuff. Go watch the videos. Try it for yourself. And I hope more people spread the word on this and, and more people uh, try this out on their projects. I think it would be uh, a if I can contribute this to the structural world on aircraft, ultralights, peaches, uh, and be cool stuff, and we'll just make aircraft a lot lighter and stronger. So thanks for watching. Bye for now. Fly safe.